I'm James and this has become HVT and this is Monty, my black lab. Today I'd like to talk to you about tracking your fitness, specifically how tracking your fitness will make forming and maintaining a diet easier and keep you motivated. When I first started back in 2013, I got one of these, the Fitbit One. I love the Fitbit One, I've had the same one since 2013 so I can attest to the quality of the product. When I first got this, this was their flagship product. I think now it's been replaced by two, maybe three wrist worn devices. I don't really have a lot of experience with them. In fact, the only fitness trackers I do have experience with is the Fitbit one and this guy right here, the Polar M400, which I'll be talking about a little bit later. The reason that tracking your fitness is so incredibly helpful and motivating is because it breaks down your life into actual hard data that you can work with. It turns your life into an RPG. Now, if you're not a gamer, that stands for role playing game. Now, us gamers know that RPGs are based entirely around stats. Your character's speed, his strength, his agility, all that's measured in numerical form. Having a fitness tracker breaks your life down into numerical form. You're able to see the hard evidence of things that you're good at, places you need improvement, things that you've already mastered. I was able to see all the activity I did throughout the day on Fitbit's website, which future me will show you in a moment. And then at the end of the day, subtract out how much food I had eaten to get my actual calorie deficit for that day, which is wonderful because if you know that you have a deficit, you know that you're losing weight. And it doesn't even have to be that much of a deficit, just enough. Whenever I would log food, I would overestimate. Whenever I would log my activity, I would underestimate. That way, I was always keeping myself erring on the side of caution into the deficit zone. Now, what worked for me as far as diet and as far as exercise might not work for you. We're all different. And the most important thing is that you trust your body. If your body's telling you to stop something, st stop right there. It is not worth getting hurt over. When I used to go to bed at night, I like to make sure that I had an over thousand calorie deficit. Again, that worked for me and that might not work for you. Your body might need more calories to survive. It's up to you to decide what works for you. But that's the great thing about products like the Fitbit is it helps you make that determination on whether or not you've eaten too much or not enough throughout the day. But that's enough out of me for now. I'm gonna let future me take over and he's gonna talk to you a little bit about the website and I'll see you back here in a minute. So now that we're back inside and at a computer, uh, I want to show you the Fitbit website. Uh, this is the, the home screen when you, after you make an account and you log into your account, this is the screen you're going to be presented with. Uh, you can see your friends here on the side. I only have one friend that's actively using his Fitbit at the moment. And he's beating me by 5,000 steps, but I'm not going to let it get to me too much, although it is going to irritate the hell out of me. And I feel like I'm going to have to go for at least a two mile walk later to try to put myself back in the lead. Um, you can see here, uh, uh, you can customize all these tiles also and move them around, um, you know, uh, add new ones too. There's a whole um, list of them you can add as well. Uh, these are just the ones that I use for my quick reference. As you can see, the, the goal met, I've already met my goal. My goal was 144 pounds and I got there. Um, let me see if we can find a graph. I see I haven't updated it in a while, but if we went back in my history, you would see it all the way up at 210 and gradually working its way down. You can also add your body fat percentage. And the last time I used this, my body fat percentage was 14.9% body fat. Uh, it's now down closer to like 9.5% body fat. So uh, it's, it's just nice to know that that's there though. I mean, I would highly recommend using it if you're in the process of losing weight. I stopped using it because I have to put muscle on and they don't have a program set up in Fitbit to add weight. So for me, it, the weight aspect of the Fitbit at right now is kind of um, useless. So I don't even bother with that too much. I use this right here, the, um, the calorie count, because it says so far today I've burned 2,016 calories and I've eaten 1,096 calories. Now I'm going to show you how that really breaks down right now. I'm going to go up here to log and it brings you right to the logging food. Um, before we go into that real quick, I just want to show you next to it is activities, weight, sleep, journal, heart rate, blood pressure, and glucose. Um, I never really got too much into the sleep one. Um, the Fitbits can track sleep. Uh, the one I use does it with a wristband. <clears throat> Not very necessary though. Um, the heart rate ones would, that would really come in handy if you have a heart rate monitor with your Fitbit. Uh, mine does not come with that. I have the Polar M400, which I'm going to talk about momentarily. Uh, that's what I use for my fitness tracking as far as heart rate. 
<clears throat> but I'll get into that in a second. What I usually, what I use Fitbit for predominantly is the food and activities. So as far as food's concerned, you can see a breakdown of everything I've eaten today. Uh, you know, two eggs for breakfast with spinach, some coconut water, and protein powder mixed into it. Um, I always overestimate my food and underestimate my exercise. That way that I know that there'll always be a difference and I'm erring on the side of caution. I have this already programmed in because it is fully customizable if you want to keep yourself on a diet. I have mine programmed to always keep me at a 500 calorie deficit. So if I follow it to the letter, I'm already 500 calories ahead when I go to bed at night. Uh, clicking over on the arrow right here, it brings you to your actual, uh, what you can actually eat for the rest of the day. I can still eat 923 more calories as of right now. Uh, the reason that that's so high at the moment is I did run a 5K today out in the heat, uh, so I know that I burnt off a quite, a, quite a good amount of calories there, but also I haven't really taken in too much food until we get to, the, uh, until we get to lunch. So for breakfast, <clears throat> I tried to keep it very low as far as calories concerned. Um, for a morning snack, all I had was an apple. And then for lunch, to make up for the fact that I burned so much, I had to have a Greek yogurt. I put protein powder in that, uh, some frozen strawberries, frozen blueberries. And then I had coconut water, again, with protein powder. Uh, actually, uh, let me up, it, up this right here. As you can see from what I'm doing, I wanted to change the amount that I had. I, I had two scoops, so we're going to add that right there. And almonds. I had a lot of almonds today. I had about 40, uh, give or take. So <clears throat> there's that. And I did give in to one of my cravings. So let me just show you how you log things real quick. You just go down to your side. I added all these in as my favorites. You can also create your own meals. So for breakfast, I, every morning I have eggs with spinach. So I just click breakfast. I just tell it when I had it, and it'll put it right down in the breakfast column. But we're not going to do that right now. Uh, we're going to go to <clears throat> dark chocolate covered cranberries. I had about eight of them eight pieces and I had them um, pretty much at lunch so right there and then if we scroll back down to lunch there they are uh, these are also you can also move things around if you had things at a different time you can just click and drag and drop <clears throat> uh, but this gives you a real clear picture of what you've consumed versus what you've burned and that is infinitely helpful when you're trying to really manage a diet uh, when I first started using this program I, I didn't really know how to diet, and I, I'm going to get into that a little bit <clears throat> as far as uh, different types of diets. I don't believe in crash dieting. I think I, I already mentioned that earlier. Uh, so um, this helped me really monitor everything I was taking in versus everything I was burning. Now let's go up here real quick to activities. I'm not going to log the fact that I ran today because you can see once my Fitbit updated to the program that it counted all these uh, steps in quick succession. So it doesn't take into account the fact that I ran. It's just counting the steps. I, like I said, I, um, I undercount all my exercise and overcount all my food so that I'll always have a, a, a division on the side of caution. So I'm not even going to bother logging it, but you can see here in the past when I did log a stair climber, circuit training, stair climber, stair climber, circuit training. Um, I, didn't, I haven't been able to use the treadmill for a while. You can see going back here to... Um, <clears throat> into the middle, middle of July uh, because of my knee injury. So I found that using the stair climber didn't hurt whatsoever. It had, that w it had no negative impact on my knee. So I've been focusing on that quite a bit, holding a 25-pound weight and going up the stair climber, but I haven't been logging the 25-pound weight addition. So that's kind of how I always try to manage my exercise versus my intake. Um, uh, and then uh, we'll go over here to weight real quick. Let me see if I can go back. It says still there. Let's see if I can go back further. All. Oh, okay, there we go. See, you can see it comes up all the way over here to, well, it starts at 199.9. And you can see over the course of time, April to July and October, it's just steadily decreased. And a lot of that is due to the addition of the Fitbit. This was an infinitely helpful tool, and I highly recommend uh, monitoring your activity, getting some type of fitness tracker. This might not be the one for you. There are plenty out there. I'm not going to try to go into all of them because the market is kind of flooded with them right now. So do your research, find out which one you think will be the best for you and, you know, go with that one. I think that, um, 
there kind of is one out there for everybody. The Jawbone just came out with the Jawbone Up 3, I believe it is. And it got okay reviews. Um, it didn't get, like, stellar reviews, and it didn't get negative reviews. It's kind of right there in between. But, again, it looked like a really interesting one. I was kind of thinking about picking it up. And then I went with the Polar M400. But that's for my own personal reasons that I'm going to get into for a se in a second. So, that was the Fitbit website. And Monty's back. Now I'd like to talk to you a little bit about... Now I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the Polar M400. I love this thing. This is a GPS heart rate monitor. It's also uh, another little bit more advanced fitness tracker. This gets more into the activities and it really breaks down your activities so that you can understand what you've done and areas, like I said, that you need improvement or maybe areas that you're really super good at and are being hurt by areas that need improvement. The Polar M400 is fantastic for monitoring your fitness because you enter a lot of your own personal data on the site based off of that, like height and weight and age, it then grabs your heart rate and gives you a readout of how many calories you're burning while you're, while you're exercising. It also sets a very high standard for the amount that you should be active throughout the day. I love holding myself accountable to the Polar M400 specifically because it demands quite a lot from you activity-wise. Now I want to show you a little bit of what the interface looks like while I'm running. Let's see if I can get a good read right there. All right, so you can see that my, my heart rate right now while we're talking is around 58 uh, and it's fluctuating. My average resting heart rate is in between 55 and 57, but it does go up and down because I am sitting up and I am talking to you. And I did just have a little bit of yogurt, so I'm digesting. But normally you'll see it around the 55 to 57 mark. That is a huge difference from where I had originally started. Like I said, I was 210 pounds and it was not 210 pounds of muscle. I had a lot to lose and I was very out of shape. But I was able to bring it down to this by focusing mostly on cardio. I go for a lot of runs and I monitor my heart rate very closely. I do that because I love competing with myself and that's something else these fitness trackers will be able to give you. When you compete with yourself, you can't lose. Maybe. You from two days ago was slightly better at something than you today are, but it's still you, and you know that eventually you'll be there again. There's a lot of times where I'll have it one day and I just won't have it the next day, and there's no real reason. Sometimes you just don't have it. Sometimes you have it too much. It's nice to find that little middle ground, and over time, as you get more and more into fitness, you'll develop that sense where you'll know the days that you're just on. And having a fitness tracker keeps you sort of accountable, especially the Polar M400. And I really want to get to Future Me, who's going to show you uh, some of the website in a second, but I just want to state that the Polar M400 keeps you uh, not only active daily, but it gives you a total for the week. And you want to hit that 100% every week. There are some days where I'll only hit 35% of my daily activity, but other days where I'll be at 170% because I'll go circuit train for 45 minutes, come home, and go run a 5K. That gets me ahead of the game overall on my weekly activity. It's nice to have those two different qualifications to hold myself accountable to. So I'm gonna let Future Me show you the website, and I'll be back in just a moment to wrap things up. So this is the Polar uh, website. Now, when you sync your Polar M400 to the website, it gives you a, a statistical breakdown of pretty much everything you've done activity-wise. I use my Fitbit for monitoring my diet. I use my Polar for monitoring all my activity. So you can see here on this calendar that some days I met my activity goal, some days I didn't. I always try to even out uh, overcompensating some days on if I know that the next day I'm not going to be able to based off of work and things like that. Sometimes you just don't have time to give uh, training your all. So I want to zoom in on a specific day so you can see just how detailed the uh, data is and when it's collected. And it is as simple as simply plugging your phone in. All this just gets synced to the site. You don't have anything else to do. Uh, so it shows you the duration of your workout up here at the top, the distance. I did 3.45 miles. Um, my average heart rate here was 172 beats a minute, and I burned 598 calories. Now, I know this isn't going to take into account the fact that it was almost over 100 degrees the day that I did this, but uh, so I'm sure I burned a little bit more than that, 
But still, it's a nice representation of what I burned. And like I said, I use my Fitbit really for the diet. I use the Polar really for my activity. Uh, so if I hit the more and expand this down, you can see that my average pace was eight, uh, an 8 minute and 42 second mile. My run index was 42. I really don't know what that means. So I'm not really going to pay too much attention to it. But the fat percentage of calories burned was 3%. I've noticed, and I didn't know this, that uh, cardiovascular activity like running burns less of a fat percentage than lifting does. So uh, so on days where I want to burn more fat, I'll go to the gym and lift. When days that I really just want to get some energy out and feel really good, I'll go for a run. Uh, so the ascent and descent here, they don't really come into handy. I'm running on a street. I, I really track those more when I'm doing off-road running, like when I go to Bladenburg Lake. That's around from my house. Now you can also add, like, it, I already told it that I ran, but I can add in a feeling I felt awesome that day. And any training notes that I might want to add in there. So I'm going to save that and we'll look at the map. The map, whenever it's ready, is unbelievably detailed. You can see on this map where I crossed the street. I mean, I think that's pretty incredible as far as uh, a GPS watch is concerned. So not only that, you can see down here the heart rate and the pace, the minute mile pace. And right here, this gray bar along the bottom is your um, uh, ascension and, 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 and descents, your uh, average altitude. So as you scroll along here, if you look up at the map, as I scroll, you'll be able to see where I was. You're able to track things as minute as hills or if you had to hurdle something. I mean, there's a lot of times where I'm running in the street, and this is just me, I really enjoy hurdling. So when I get to like a garbage can in the street, I don't go around it, I go over it. And I don't mean like over it, like through it. I mean like literally I try my best to jump over it, and I haven't missed one yet, but I'm sure that that day will come, and I really hope when it does, it's captured on video because I want to see that because it sounds really funny. Uh, so right here at the end, when we hit... 26 minutes and three seconds, but I'm not going to be able to get in that detail. So our 26 minutes and five seconds was the end of my 5K run time. Uh, now right here, you can see it really drop off because I, I, I went down to just like a walk. So my pace went down to a 17 minute mile right here. And I just kind of walked it for a little while and then started up a little jog and then hit a hill. Uh, there's a hill that leads up to my house and I love sprinting up it. So I just sprinted up the hill and my heart rate went all the way up to 157 beats a minute which feels a lot like I'm going to die when it gets that high. But it's great because I feel like I'm really exerting myself and I love being able to track it and see it all in data form. This turns everything you do into an RPG. It really does because you can track what needs improvement and, and things that you're, you are good at and you can see everything represented data-wise. Personally, like I love seeing my uh, minimum uh, heart rate. Right now it's around 57 to 58 is my minimum heart rate. My maximum is about 182. Like you saw, it went up to 187. That's very rare. Usually if I hit if I hit 182, I can feel it. I look down at my watch, I can see I'm in the 180s, and I can tell because my heart's beating out of my chest. Uh, but it's taken me so much longer to get to that. When I first started, I mentioned it in my previous video that I passed out the first time I trained. Uh, now I don't do that anymore. I mean, I, I don't pass out when I run, but like I can feel it takes a lot longer or a lot more intensity to get me to that point where my heart's pounding out of my chest. And that makes me feel so good because I know I'm improving every time I feel that way. This is sort of addictive. You're going to start liking to see, if you use a program like this, you're going to start liking to see your own improvement. Uh, just like monitoring a character in a video game, you're going to want to try to achieve that next step as far as your own personal fitness is concerned. And I highly recommend this Polar device for tracking fitness but i know that there are others out there too and if you find one that you like better i mean research them all find what you think would work for you and go with that one man i talk a lot in the future so that was fitbit and polar m400 when it comes to monitoring your fitness but like i said there are plenty of fitness trackers out there and it's important to find the one that really works for you and your style of exercise uh, also when it comes to dieting like i said earlier not everything works for everybody and it's also very important for you to find your own rhythm and your own pace when it comes to diet and remember 
Losing weight, getting in shape is not an overnight thing. There is no quick way to do this, but it shouldn't be about speed. It shouldn't be about the goal. It should really be about the journey. And I know that's easy to say. It's cliche and it's on the side of coffee cups, but it, in this case, it's genuinely true. You should enjoy every minute you're doing these activities. When I go for a run, if I told two year ago me that I would have something in my life that I consider a fun run, I would have laughed myself out of the room. Running to me was never fun. Now running 5K is fun for me. I'll go out and I'll be able to keep a nine minute pace without tracking myself. I mean, I do, like I said, on this watch right here, it'll give me my pace, but I don't even need to when I'm running a nine minute mile pace because I just know the rhythm. And that's a nice steady pace for me. I can run almost indefinitely at a nine minute mile pace. So it's pretty much just like going out and enjoying a day. I'll just run around the block a few times and enjoy the sunshine, enjoy listening to the birds and waving to people and just having a good time. I'm, it's not about losing the weight. I'm burning calories doing that, but it's not what I'm focused on. I'm just enjoying myself while I'm doing it. And every activity should be like that. There should always be a goal in the back of your mind for that particular activity at that particular moment, but not overall in the long run. So whether you are in the height of your training or maybe just starting out, I really hope you do invest some time into looking up various fitness trackers and finding the one that really works well for you. Um, I hope this video was informative and maybe a little bit motivational and helpful. I'm really just starting out with these non-game related videos. So if there's anything I can do better, please let me know down in the comments below. I'm always open to suggestions because I really want to make these videos to the best of my ability. And if they even reach one person out there and gets one person in shape and starts to train and changes their life, then all of this has been worth it. So if I can do this better, I really want to know. If you did like it and you want to see some more, hit that subscribe button and the like button and let me know down below as well. You know, I, like I said in my last video, uh, that's right here, I do read all the comments. I might not always have time to answer, but I read them all and I answer when I can. Uh, so thank you so much for hanging out. I'm James, and I will see you next time on Become HVT.